Hey folks, thanks for joining us today. We have a really fun discussion. I think you can enjoy it. We have a couple experts from Bazooka Farmstar. We're going to talk about uh, manure injection application. Uh, a lot of uh, interesting angles to this discussion. Um, and want to welcome uh, Marcus Davis, equipment specialist with Bazooka Farmstar. Marcus, good to see you again. Good to see you. And we have Sydney Greiner. Uh, Sydney, are you a product manager kind of on the marketing side for Bazooka Farmstar? Yep, I am. Okay. Well, again, thank you guys for joining us from Washington, Iowa, right in the heart of the Midwest here. Now, um, from the perspective of uh, farmers and ranchers, um, let's talk components here when we start manure injection. What are you know, from, from pit to field, what are all the pieces of the puzzle that folks would be looking at if they're considering, uh, you know, making an investment here? Uh, usually, usually it starts with some type of agitation, um, you know, getting that manure suspended, um, getting it evenly stirred. So that way the manure is, you know, the same value from the beginning to the end. So obviously you need to start with some type of agitation at the beginning. Um, then you're going to need a few pumps, um, you know, maybe a, a main pump or a booster pump or some type of a, a rig to be able to get that manure in, into a into a system moving down the down the line, and then obviously you need some hose. Um, if you're doing the uh, drag line side, uh, you need some hose to be able to make that manure flow from the building out to the field, and then obviously some type of applicator um, out in the field to inject the manure. And I assume with these different uh, pieces of the puzzle, we have <clears throat> different capacity size solutions, um, just depending on the size of the operation. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's there's all different types of sizes. Um, we've got small pumps to, to massive pumps to move big gallons. Um, then you also have smaller diameter hose for the guys that only have a few gallons to do. Uh, and then, you know, you talk into the commercial world, and then obviously the hose can get bigger to be able to move more volume um, at a quicker pace. Okay. And just for perspective here, folks, as we uh, move along in our discussion, uh, Marcus, uh, you, I'm trying to remember from our previous conversation, you actually also... Um, uh, not only worked for the company, but have been involved on the farmer side in manure application for, for how many years now? Uh, this would be my 17th year um, actually in the manure industry. So, okay. so real firsthand knowledge here, folks, kind of from the farmer side and the manufacturer side. Um, so we appreciate your insights here. Now, guys, if we talk pros and cons, you know, if we talk custom manure application, um, you know, what would you say to that topic? People, you know, the pros and cons of, of hiring a custom application. Um, when you when you hire a custom guy, you know, obviously it's going to be probably more on them, you know, for the expense up front. Um, you know, it, it's a big overhead to overtake when you're getting into the custom business. Um, so, you know, if you, if you have a custom guy come in, you know, you, you just basically pay a, pay a fee, you know, whether it's per hour or per gallon um, for, for a guy to come in to be able to move that manure for you. You don't have to worry about that expense, you know, in a, in a long-term investment, I guess you could say. Right. And what would be the variety of services that a custom applicator would typically offer, would you say? Um, most, most custom guys will come in, um, you know, when, when the weather's favorable or, you know, when it lines up for the fields to be ready. Uh, but they would come in, uh, set up on your, on your location, you know, and be able to move that manure, hopefully in a timely manner, you know, depending on the rain and, and how the field conditions are. But you know, basically, they're going to come in, they're going to set up, um, they're going to start moving manure in the fastest way possible. You know, some guys include fuel, some guys don't. They'll supply a map of where manure was applied. I um, mean, not only for helping that farmer be able to show where the manure got put or if they, you know, the technology is coming into this to being able to manure see what nutrients are in there. Um, also, you know, if the field's weaker, you know, they, um, they've talked about doing precision manure, which is just kind of like precision planning, being able to um, a little bit more where's needed. Obviously, there's some regulations based upon what the, the DNR would tell you that you can apply. Sure. How about uh, on the cost front, on the, on the custom side, would you, you know, what can folks expect to pay? What would you say to that question? Marcus, from your it's, years of experience? That's kind of a tricky question. Um, you, you, you get, it depends on where you're at in the country. Um, it, it's kind of a, you know, you get into some dairy pockets or you get into more hog, I guess you could say. Um, just kind of depends. Some guys, some guys uh, charge hourly. Some guys charge by the gallon. Um, so one of those things that 
I would tell you a lot of manure guys probably don't talk about um, just because in, in the commercial side of it, it get really competitive. But um, most, most uh, dragline guys out there, are, you know, they, they kind of stay the same with everybody else. There's not really anybody that's out there to undercut the next guy. Everybody can stay busy. Trust me. There's plenty okay. out. There. Right. And how about, uh, is there a typical way that, that estimated costs are calculated? Uh, you know, or, or just different custom applicators do that differently, Marcus? Uh, everybody kind of does it differently uh, based upon, you know, um, you know, obviously the girls do a great job in the marketing side, being able to come up with a, like an ROI calculator um, to be able to show not only commercial guys, but as a guy that wanted to start his own system to pump his own manure, um, they can show the return on investment to help out, you know, with the whole company. Just so that way, when you do get into something like this, there's some obvious numbers to say, Hey, this is what it's going to take. And this is how many gallons it's going to take to be able to pay for something like this. Okay. Well, that's what Marcus said. I think we are going to um, offer that in our trade show booth. Um, so if they go there, they'll be able to download that calculator actually. And then um, Marcus and I actually just went through earlier this week and we've laid out good, better, best systems um, for people that are looking into it. Um, so they can kind of understand the different variables that go into it, how many gallons they actually have to pump and um, what type of equipment makes sense for them if it does make sense for them. Okay. That's awesome, Sydney. That you actually, did you say, on a calculator basis, you're, you're providing that, or did I hear that right? Yep, yep, there will be a downloadable spreadsheet that they can just input their numbers and then flip to another screen and it'll show them their ROI, potentially. Okay. I yep. love that, that's fantastic. So let's just flip the uh, question here, guys, get, and curious to get both your takes on it. Again, so let's talk pros and cons, but from the in-house, so you wanna you know make the investment in doing this yourself on the farm. Uh, pros and cons to, to that, uh, to that approach. Um, I'd tell you, you know, obviously I, I deal with these on a regular basis. Um, most of the ones that you see that are going to get into the manure side that are going to bring it in house or, you know, they might have a family member or some kids or nephews or nieces that are looking back to get back on the family farm. Mm -hmm. Sure. When you look at the expense that they have every year of pumping manure, it makes more sense to bring it in house where they want to of the farm and also you know when you look at look at the potential of you know having everything controlled by your own farm operation it makes more sense because you know that that family member let's say for a son or a daughter that wants to come back they know how the farm's taken care of they know how the 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 fields need to be when they leave you know because and and again i'm not giving the custom guy a bad a bad name by any means because i do it myself but you know sometimes when it's your own you take care of it just a little bit different so, um, you know, it's a huge, it's a huge thing to bring it in house, not only financially, but you know, it makes more sense for, for a big operation to be able to do it themselves. And to add to that too, um, Mark, it'll basically get done when you need it done. Right. Um, because your job is the only job that you have to get done unless you are expanding into your doing your neighbors eventually, but, um, it's kind of a priority for somebody to do it themselves. I bet that has to be a huge, huge advantage, especially the weather conditions we've seen the last couple of years, your windows to get done what you got to get done seem to be shrinking all the time. So uh, being able to control that must be huge, I would think. That's a, that's a huge advantage uh, of owning your own equipment when, when it comes time for that. And I suppose customer feedback over the years, folks that have made that decision, is that towards the top of what they echo back when you, when you follow up with them there, that, that control of timing, they just appreciate that. Uh, for sure. I mean, it, it, it's huge. It's huge when, you know, obviously it gets colder faster in the winter time. And it seems like it rains every day in the fall. So, you know, being able to get their corn off uh, or beans off and being able to put manure down the next day, that's a, that's a huge advantage. Yeah. You, you're uh, engineering your great folks there at Bazooka Farmstar. If you guys could challenge or fix our control of rain in October, November, that would be excellent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Bazooka Farmster, I mean, you guys sell your manure application equipment all over North America. Uh, I'm just curious, with, in all the different regions and, and soil types you run into, different uh, trends different? I mean, can you speak to those differences that you guys run across over the North American territory? 
Yeah, um, one, of the, one of the biggest things about that is, you know, it's just like um, anything else in the industry, you know, in the farming industry, it just, you know, it's a trend thing. It goes from one side to the other. You know, you kind of get up in the Northeast, uh, not necessarily as much injection as what it is here in the Midwest. Um, you know, it's, it's more of the understanding, the know, the know of how manure can be a value to you instead of a nuisance. Um, that's one of the biggest things I would tell you in the industry that I've been in so many years is that you know how it's became from a nuisance to you know just spreading it on top you know unfortunately you know you where it does run off but now you know you get into this new era of injection you know with a no-till style being able to put that manure down and be able to utilize it for your crop has been tremendous you know Hmm. it depends on where you're at like i said um you know you get you get a lot of guys that uh you know in the dairy industry that do a lot of, of hay crop where you know, they've made some different tools to be able to put that manure down to be able to let that next crop of uh, hay grow up and, and be more valuable to them to get more tonnage. So interesting. How, I think, you, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Sydney. Well, I was going to say, and I think with that, regulations in the Midwest are a lot more strict than they are out east. And so we've kind of been forced into this manure injection. And so with that, we've seen the value, um, to Marcus's point, of what manure can do for us. Whereas in the east, they're not forced to do it. So not a lot of people are doing it. It's a growing trend out there. But again, it's convincing them that manure injection is actually valuable to them and that the extra cost is actually of value as well. It's just like an ROI calculator when you talk about buying a system. It's shown them the ROI of what that manure can do for for a crop to be able to, you know, get that investment back. Very interesting. Are you guys seeing um, folks in the Northeast um, really leaning into what's happening here in the Midwest? And are they seem pretty receptive to the manure injection uh, transition or opportunity? I would tell you, yes. Um, I would say it's probably a slower process than, you know, um, here in the Midwest than you would, you know, the farther east you go. Um, You know, it's just different type of toolage makes a difference too. Um, Just because you're injecting it, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, a ripper is the same as what a a no-till style bar would work. But, you know, that's that's a matter of opinion. Um, You know, and and like I said, it's just, it's a matter of, um, you know, once they do it once and, and see the results, I think that's the biggest thing. It's just um, just like anything else, trying to get grandpa to change the newest planters, sometimes a little tough. So Tough to convince grandpa, isn't it? But uh, <laughs> grandpa, <laughs> grandpa knows ROI, doesn't he? Right. So, oh, for sure. For sure. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, guys, let's talk, uh, when we talk specifics, to uh, manure injection, what are the reasons uh, folks choose different type of toolbars? I mean, what what's, goes into that? I mean, Sydney kind of pointed on it too, is, you know, it just kind of depends on the region. Um, you know, you can get into different areas where it might be a rockier soil. So obviously you want to go with something that doesn't um, go underneath the ground and rip a rock up or bring up, you know, bigger material. Um, you know, you get into a lot of the no-till world where, you know, they don't want a lot of tillage, so you need some type of a material, uh, um, an applicator that, you know, doesn't disturb a lot of ground. But also, you know, it just it kind of depends on what the crops are that they're using and what their focus is for the next crop coming in. Um, kind of depends on. And also, you know, it comes down to gallons. And it's just it's a challenge in the industry when you're choosing your application bar because of how many gallons the regulations allow you to put down. And sometimes you just got to pick the right tool to be able to put that, that gallon down. Right. And Sydney on the topic of regulations, even across the Midwest here, uh, what's that like as a manufacturer uh, when you're selling uh, products to uh, must be a lot to stay on top of, I would, I would think. Right. And to your point, like we, we do have a pretty um, big team of engineers and they're pretty receptive of what we're hearing going on out there. So to Marcus's point, um, a dairy applicator is going to be able to put down a higher gallon than a hog guy. Um, and us, we're very um, conscious of the environment and we try and get that manure covered um, and down in the ground. And so um, our team is working on a better solution than um, our current phantom unit to help those guys get those gallons, but still be environmentally friendly, so to say. Interesting. Now, if we talk about the whole manure application um, uh, scene, I guess, you know, within the ag industry, it's very vibrant niche. Now, let's let's describe the landscape. Uh, how many other players, manufacturers in the space, 
uh, you know, competitors to Bazooka Farmstar. Um, how would you guys assess the playing field? It's a very niche market. Um, it, it's, it's very hard to play into this market due to the fact that, you know, we don't build anything the same. Everything's customized um, as for whether a, a, a farm wants it or a custom guy wants it. Um, there's, there's two or three big players in the market. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of other manufacturers that are smaller, I would call. I mean, and again, it's a matter of opinion, I guess you could say. But, um, you know, it's, there's not a lot in the industry that, that build the volume of equipment that, that like we do. Um, but there's a lot of guys, like I said, that there's other, other ways to be able to adapt to what they're looking for to be able to pump the manure. Okay. Now, how about um, as you guys, I mean, you're Midwesterners here, you're humble, you're not braggy, but uh, Bazooka Farmstar, you guys have quite a history. Um, I'm trying to remember, it goes back to, was it, it was seven, mid seventies, am I right? Or am I off on that? Nope, you're pretty close. Uh, I, I don't know the exact date myself, but it, it has been around for quite a few years. Um, you know, I, I think I mentioned last time, you know, it started out as an auger company and uh, they merged um, the auger company with the manure side. And that's where Bazooka Farmstar came from. Okay. Um, so how, yeah, about, we, how we, about advantages or what makes uh, Bazooka Farmstar a superior product or choice for folks in this man manure uh, application decision? <laughs> So I'll, I'll let her key on here in a second, but you know, one of the things that I would tell you in, in the industry that, you know, we all strive for the same thing at the end of the day. It's about keeping the, keeping the customer happy, keeping the service there, um, the quality of the work that we bring, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that, you know, bazooka can offer, you know, we basically, we act like a big family here. Um, you know, we, we treat everybody with respect. We do, you know, we came out with a set of values and I'm going to let Sydney key on the values here. Cause I think that she can probably do a better job than I can at the values, but um, you know, they mean a lot to us here. All right, All right Sydney, you, you've been teed up now. That's my cue. Um, so basically we live by the four B's of bazooka, which are bring it, bleed bazooka bigger than us and be safe. Um, and basically any business decision that we do make throughout the day, big or small is based around those things. Um, and to Marcus's point, I think that all of those things, um, tie into the quality of equipment, equipment that we make because of our employees at the end of the day. We always have people willing to work 24 seven. Um, if somebody's broken down in the field, obviously time is of the essence, especially with the weather, the crazy weather we're always working with. And we have guys don't even bat an eye that take off to go um, service that customer. And so um, I think just all around um, working with those four B's and helping them drive our decisions makes us a pretty good company to work with. Now, tell me more about uh, that first B, uh, Cindy, bring it. Uh, that, I like that one. Go, to, go a little deeper there. Um, so basically, bring it means that you're going to do anything you have to to get the job done, and you own the job that you're working on. Um, you don't make excuses. If, if something's not going to get done, we're all honest with each other, and we say it's not going to be done. Here's why, but this is what we're going to do to bring it and get it done the next day type thing. I love it. And I see, folks, uh, I should share too, we see echoes of this even this morning. Uh, we were planning on having the director of engineering, uh, Phil, um, um, uh, what is Phil's last name, guys? Phil? Menino. Menino. He was mm -hmm. going to be joining us, but work came first. Uh, very, uh, had to take care of the customer. And actually, Marcus, we talked last time about you even have the, the build-it-yourself function right on your website, bazookafarmstar.com. So commitment to customer making what's right for them. That's, that's a piece of the Bazooka Farmstar uh, winning recipe. For sure. For sure. That's one thing that we strive on here, you know, is customers first, whatever the customer needs, but that's what we'll build. It's not about, it's not about what we want to design. It's about what they want and we'll design it. I love it. Now uh, I'll just throw this out as we wrap up here, guys. Uh, any words of wisdom, uh, your years of experience in the space here, people analyzing, trying to figure out, you know, um, if they want to um, maybe bring on manure application on their own, on their own farm. Oh, any uh, parting words of wisdom you guys would have? I, I guess my, my parting words are, is, you know, there's, there's no, there's no wrong question in the industry. I guess if you have any doubt or if you have any question, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, myself, there's a, we have a heck of a team here, um, you know, from, from our front administrator all the way to the, the, the guy that uh, is janitor, I guess you could say. I mean, it's everybody will have your back here, Bazooka. You know, it's if, if you need a question answered, 
or if you have um, an understanding of what what it takes to get into the industry, you know, we're, we're here. You know, it's not about, um, like I said, it's not about how we want to build something. It's about what you want. We'll build what you want. It's not about uh, just building a line of equipment. And uh, so, Sydney, uh, how about you? Any any words of wisdom as, as we wrap yep. up here? And I would just say to piggyback off of Marcus, um, I'm not going to sit here and say that we're the best choice for everybody. Um, but I think, again, that honesty and that extra communication that our entire team um, goes to, if we know that we're not a good fit for your area and we're not the, we're not the answer, we're not going to try and push something on you. We're going to give you the best advice we can so that at the end of the end of the day, your operation is the best it can be for you. Well, I love that, guys. Uh, and very intrigued folks, go check out the, the calculator Sydney was talking about at the Bazooka Farm Star uh, exhibit at the virtual show here. And just want to thank uh, Sydney Griner, product manager, and Marcus Davis, equipment specialist with Bazooka Farm Star, for joining us today. I've learned a lot. I've been watching uh, this big manure equipment sell at auction for 30 years. This was great. This will help me going forward. Um, but again, your guys' website, Bazooka Farm Star, is it's just bazookafarmstar.com, correct? Yep. Correct. All right. Thanks much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. you.